Okay, we have A, A, B, and 40 are four numbers. A is the smallest, and 40 is the greatest. And it says the range of the four numbers is 14. Well, great, that means I can work out A straight away, because the range is the largest minus the smallest, and that's equal to 14 in this case. So A must equal 26. And the median is the middle number. In this case, there are two numbers in the middle. We have to take the average of those two numbers. And we're told that's equal to 30. So that means that A plus B divided by 2 must equal 30. So A we know is 26 plus B is equal to 2 times 30, which is 60 which means that B is equal to 34. And we're done. Okay, this is a classic question that comes up so frequently. You have class A and class B, and there are 28 students in class A and 32 in class B. The mean score of all the students in both classes is 72.6. Okay, we can get started. So the total for all the students in A and B, when divided by the total number of students, which is 28 plus 32, which is 60, gives me the mean of the two classes, which is 72.6. So we can reverse this to work out the total scores of class A and B by doing 72.6 times by 60. Okay, great. So the total in A and B is equal to 4,356. That's going to be really helpful. Next line. The mean score of the students in class A is 75. Well, again, I could do the same thing. I could write the total in this time just in class A divided by the number of people in A, which is 28 is equal to 75. So I can reverse that to work out the total number of marks scored in class A by doing 75 times 28 and that's 2100. Okay, work out the mean score for the score for the students in class B. Well, I can work out the total in class B um, because that is the difference between these two. So that's 4, 3, 5, 6, minus 2,100. So I do 4, 3, 5, 6, minus 2,100. And that gives me 2,256. So the mean in class B is the total they scored divided by the number of students, which is 32. So I divide this by 32, and I get 70.5. And we're done. OK, the next part of the question says the lowest score in class A is 39. And the range of scores for class A is 57. So that means that if the lowest score is 39, there's some bigger score over here, which has a gap of 57. So I can work out the upper score or the highest score in class A by adding on 57. And that gives me 98. So that's the largest score in class A. In class B, we have 33 and the range is 60. So the lowest is 33, and the range, the gap between the biggest and smallest is 60, which means that the highest must be, sorry, 93. And then it says find the range of scores for all students. Well, that's the biggest score overall minus the smallest score overall. So it's 96 minus 33, which is 63. Uh, here is another question where we need to work out the uh, totals. 
So five children are playing on a trampoline. Their mean weight of the five children is 28 kilograms. So we can say total of the five divided by five was equal to 28. Multiplying both sides by five give us that 28 times five is 140. So the total weight of all of these children is 140. Two of the children get off the trampoline and the mean weight of these two is 26.5. So that means the total of these two divided by two was equal to 26.5. So doing 26.5 times two gives us 53. So the total of those two was 53. Work out the mean weight of the three children who are left on. So we do 140 minus 53 is 87. And we take that 87. And we divide that by the number of children left, which is three. So we do uh, divide by three and we get 29. Again, another question very similar. These questions are very common. 12 boys and eight girls in a class. The boys and girls have some coins. The mean number of coins that the boys have is 5.5. So we can say the total of the boys divided by the number of boys, which is 12, is equal to 5.5. We can then work out the total by doing 12 times 5.5 which is 66. So the total number of coins the boys have is 66. It then says the girls have a total of 18 coins. Work out the mean number of coins of the 20 children. So the total number of coins will be 66 plus the 18 that the girls have. And then we divide that by the total number of children, which is 20. So we do 66 plus 18, and then divide that by 20, and we get an average of 4.2. Okay, next topic is interquartile range given a data set. Now this topic doesn't come up very often, it's not particularly common, but it is easy marks if you know how to do it. And you'll always get given 11 bits of data because that is nicely divisible by four once you add one to it. Okay, the first thing you need to do is you need to get your data in order. So I'm gonna write them in order, crossing them off as I go along so that I try not to um, miss any out. And we have 11 here and then 12 and then 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and then we have 18 twice. Now the reason why they give you 11 is because if we do 11 plus one, and then if we divide that by four, we get the position of the lower quartile, which is the third position. So if I go one, two, three, that's my lower quartile. So lower quartile is equal to 11. And then to find the upper quartile, you take the number of numbers in the set, you plus one to it, you divide it by four, then times it by three. So 12 divided by four times by three to get the three quarter position and that is nine. So it's the ninth term in the sequence. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and it's 17. So the upper quartile is 17. So therefore the interquartile range is the upper minus the lower. In this case, it is six. Okay, the final tricky question uh, is one where you have to compare 
the difference between the medians and the interquartile range. Now lots of students get this wrong because they don't really understand what the interquartile range is. Uh, so first off, we let's use the median. So we can say on average, um, the students scored higher in the science test as the median was greater. So median is an average. It's a way of comparing how well people have done or how high the numbers are. Whereas the interquartile range is a spread. It tells you how spread out the data is. So we can say that the um, the results in the science test were more spread out. So again, median is an average and range or interquartile range is how spread out the data is. Okay, that's averages and ranges completed. Uh, you might have noticed that those questions where you have to work out the total and then uh, work out a new mean come up really frequently. Those ones are really good for you if you were to master those because it's likely that, that will come up in your exam. Okay, bye for now.